So I only met her recently, and she was like really one boss lady. And this is an extraordinary story of somebody who's actually a war survivor. She had to spend more than four and a half years in a camp in Rajasthan because her parents were immigrants from China. After that, a few months in jail, did not go to school till she was 14, lived through all of this. This is because of the 1962 Indochina Indo war. At that time, she said that they were suspected of being spies, so they were kind of locked away without due process, had to move around. So they moved from Rajasthan uh, to Assam to Shillong. And finally, she reached Kolkata and now actually is the owner of five brilliantly successful restaurants and is a total boss lady, as I said, and is known as the dawn of Tangra. Uh, so let me please welcome on stage Monica Lu. If we can have her, and I'll leave it to Tara to the. <laughs> Can anyone hear me? Awesome. I feel very far away from you, Monica. We have been sitting quite closely before. Uh, so by the way, the Dawn has a name. The Dawn's name is Monica Liu. She is the owner of five incredible restaurants uh, all over Calcutta. And the one she invited me to is called Beijing, but there's a couple of others called Mandarin and Kim La. Kim Ling. So I encourage you to go and eat there because this is the brains uh, and the balls behind it, frankly. Um, so, Monica, I will quickly ask you, and I know Barkha has already introduced you as the Dawn, um, but before we get to how Monica became the Dawn, I'd love to hear a little bit more, and I'd love for you to share with the audience a little bit more about what your journey was. That there was a train ride to Dioli. Um, there was the six years that you spent there, um, and I don't think any of us can even begin to imagine what that was like, so please do tell us. First, let me ask you, all of you, <laughs> do I look like Dawn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dawn in cooking, maybe. <laughs> we'll come to that. I suspect you're a Dawn in many places. Uh, actually, when I'm young, I'm wrong about eight years, eight plus, uh, like I was, was in Shillong. So, because uh, due to 60 to Indo China border war, so they have took us all, not only me, around about 15,000 people was taken to Rajasthan. And of course, we are 15 days in jail, in Shillong jail. After that, we are taken to Rajasthan for five and a half years. Then when gradually somebody was, after two, two and a half years, there some so many of them released and most of them, they went back to China. And, and because I love India and my father also love India, he said, I don't want to go to China. We've been here so long, so we can speak very good Hindi and we love Indian people also. So we choose to stay back in India. And they took us, Five and a half years, both in jail and in camp, but we still remain. And we were released after five and a half years. Inside the camp, there's not a, it's not so bad about it because anybody in the jail, you can get food, you can, you know, you don't feel anything. But once we release from the jail, we are in horrible five time, like. No food, no house. The worst was part, my father said that if we don't get a house, we'll stay in a bus station. But luckily that so many friends, they have come and help us out. And in the age of 14, 14 plus, I, I was released from there. And being the eldest among five of us, I have one sister, one more sister and four younger brother. We are five sibling, But then it's very difficult, like, you know, seven people have to eat and have to get some education. Then that is the worst part for us. And I had that, then I, my mommy start to make some momo, some pao to sell in the school. So today what 
I am in restaurant, maybe because my parents are in restaurant. Before going to Rajasthan, my parents are running restaurant. From my very young age, I'm with them only. Then it's uh, because we are selling momo and pao, then after I got married, I don't have to do that. My husband is doing some leather manufacturing, but did not do well. So after that, what to do? I was thinking if I can do something of myself. Of course, I did run around selling some leather, getting some chemical, getting some commission on that. You know, it's as far as I'm stealing somebody's things, I'm doing that, I'm earning from that, I don't, I feel proud of myself. I don't steal anybody's things, I just earning. Whatever I'm getting, I'm happy with that. A small amount, but at least I can also, you know, survive with that. So how do you go from selling, getting a small commission here and there and trying to support your Later husband? on. How do you get from that to five restaurants in Calcutta? No, no, no. I... <laughs> it's not like that. That time, that is before my, I opened my restaurant. Then I was very good. I was very sharp in mind that I can become a very good beautician also. I was... Uh, I have started a parlor in Danzang Road. A very small one. I ran for four years and I give up because of my young kids. I have three children. When they have to go to school and before I come back, they all went off to sleep, no dinner for them. I was so, I feel bad about it. So I just leave my, uh, sell out my parlor and I came back home again. Then I was, I have target some restaurant. I was thinking, Restaurant is my, uh, my job. I can cook. Of course, when I got married, I'm telling you, I don't know how, cook, how to cook rice also. Uh, when I cook rice, my, my husband is getting angry. Why your, your white rice become yellow, yellow rice? <laughs> so I don't know. I said, I don't know how to. The water is quite different. In Shillong, we have that uh, spring water. Here we have hard water. It's tubewell water. So uh, when I cook rice, always yellow, yellow. Uh, uh, slowly, I, I did learn that, how to cook. Uh, that is small thing. But then uh, when I came to, when I start my restaurant, uh, in the year 1991, that building was fully damaged. I, um, I did all this, uh, you know, renovation with my son, with my brothers. We are like coolie. The coolie work where I did. We did all the coolie work and all. And within 45 days, we have started a restaurant. Start beginning anything is not easy to. Like everyone will come and, you know, first they will try and say, yeah, I want this food and that food. After eating finish up, they say, oh, I've made to one baje I said, how can you say baje? You, you, you finish it and now you say that this food is baje, that is not right. So I Is that become, when the dawn emerged? Uh, then, uh, no, no, then I was, I forced them, they have to pay. I said, I'm not, I am not stealing from anybody. This is my hard, hard work on money. You have to pay. If they don't pay, then I'm like a Bruce Lee, more than the Bruce Lee, fighting for, <laughs> back for the earning. So this is happening for so many years in Kimling. It's very difficult also. I, that time, for one year, I really want to give up. But then I determined that, no, I should try my best. Then slowly, slowly, I get, come to know so many people. And you know, Bengali people, they are not bad. They are very good. But see, you can't say everyone is good. Some of them, maybe they, they know that you are new in this line, so they come and harass you. So did you like feel that. like because you were this woman who was running this business, they took advantage of the fact and they thought they could push their luck and, you know, get away without paying for things? I, I don't annoys. feel that. I don't feel that. I feel that that time when I'm fighting, I take, think that I'm different. I'm, I never, I should not think that I'm a woman. I should think that I'm a fighter. I have to, I have to survive, to work hard, to get bought uh, the meal for my kids. For and where was your I husband when all of this was happening? My husband also uh, helping me, but uh, as 
always I in the stage I was say that a success man always have a woman behind. But return that word, always if there's a success woman should have a success is a, have a man in behind. If success that means doesn't mean that you can do everything yourself. You should get so many people support, your family support, everything. So this is how I came out from there and then slowly, slowly I got thought that in Tangra is it's like a village. I should go out from the village. I should go out from the village to the city. So I start Mandarin. It's running restaurant I took over from my cousin brother. I paid them. And then I got uh, Tung Fong restaurant in Park Street. Tung Fong is a huge restaurant. It's a, a bright of Chinese people. Everyone, when they come, they say, ah, yeah, this is the restaurant. This is called the restaurant. Mm. Beautiful decoration. Food is not very expensive. All the people can afford to take. If you can afford, you, if you want, High five, you can go for that. If you want, you know, simple one, you also get it. So from that burnt yellow rice to this amazing food that you're describing to me, and now I'm feeling hungry, um, uh, how much do you cook? Is it something that you love to do? What's your favorite thing to cook or what's your favorite thing to eat? See, I, in my lifetime, like when I start to cook, I only know cook that chili chicken very well. I don't know what happened. All the Bengali, as soon as they sit in, my, in the table, they said, first what is chili chicken chahiye. So that it become famous. Then uh, some them back, uh, after some years, one of my cousin's brother, he came from Singapore. That time is New Year time. So he said, Didi, I want to make some prawn for you. I said, okay, fine. I'm hosting some table for my friends and all, New Year time. So he made fry, golden fried prawn for me. That prawn is horror. <laughs> Lots of butter. I can't even eat. I was like, what the hell is this? What is golden fried prawn? Small shrimp inside and made it big. Fry it. It's like golden fried prawn. I said, no. Then I took the recipe, whatever he's doing, I try to modify that one. Now I have go got so many golden fry pan award <laughs> because I also should thank one to my cousin because when he came, even that is not tasty, but I modified that one. Today, really everybody, anybody come, they like prawn. First is that golden fry prawn. And I got so many award. I have hang in my restaurant also. I think you will have many customers for golden fried prawns tonight. Um, <laughs> so we have three minutes left, and in those three minutes, I'll ask you a question that I was asking you at the back also. I think you have been introduced as the dawn of Tangra, or the dawn of Chinatown. I have called you the dawn of Tangra, I think 85 times in the last 10 minutes. Is it a title that you like? If you had to pick a title for yourself, what would that title be? Don is not a bad word. <laughs> Don is something that you feel uh, different. So I don't mind that also. But all my friends said, hi, why you want to take this title? I said, it's not that me. Because all my friends want me to. So leave it like that. Doesn't matter. Okay, and last... You're sitting in a group, uh, in a room full of some amazing young women who are all studying and you've spoken to me about education, how important it was and it was not something that was, that you could take for granted. What do you have in these last two minutes to say to a group of young women who are starting out? I feel all the young girls should not be scared of anything. When there's a will, there's a way. You should always remember to work hard. Whether you are educated, if you don't work hard, you will get nothing. If you are uneducated, if you work hard, you get something. That's my word to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
We have a special award for the dawn of Tangra. Amazing. The Her Award, just for you. Thank you, Don, for gracing us.